So recently Sony announced the A6400, it's a successor to the A6500. Actually it sits between the A6300 as well as the A6500 and I think it's going to be a best value for money camera right now available in the market. And about this A6400 I have talked in a Hindi language which I'll leave a link to the description section down below. You can watch that if you want to know more about this A6400. But in this video I'm going to talk about the differences, key differences between the A6500 and A6400. So before I begin with the slideshow, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you are new. Hit that like button and do share with your friends which helps me make more content. So all right then, let's look at this slideshow and what's exactly the difference between the Alpha 6400 as well as the Alpha 6500. So here's the slideshow that I prepared to show you what's the exact difference between these two cameras, the Sony A6400 and the Sony X6500, at least on paper. Let's first look at the dimensions in the sense how's the body, as you can see, they are both identical in every aspect except the fact that the depth which means the A6500 has more pronounced grip than the compact A6400 and that's why the new A6400 is lighter by 50 grams. Moving on, this is probably going to be one of the most seeked after feature if not the most seeked I mean. The flip LCD screen for vloggers, self portraits and even for any occasion. Interestingly, Sony has not provided the simple mechanism articulated LCD screen, instead they opted for this weird looking out up and out down mechanism as you can see in the picture. Anyways, it at least lets you vlog but there is a little problem with that mechanism as the hot shoe interface and the viewfinder bothers the screen a little bit and can be a bit obstructive. On the other hand, the LCD screen on the A6500 as you can see is fixed. Pretty much the rest of the thing remains same like the diopter adjustment, viewfinder resolution etc. The viewfinder on the A6500 is a XGA OLED and I'm not quite sure about the A6400's viewfinder. But the frame rate on the A6400 is adjustable to different frame rates so that's an added advantage with the A6400. Uh, remember guys I'm just pointing the key features and the differences. If I don't mention some features that you are actually looking for that means they are absolutely similar in both the cameras. Because I have done a thorough research on these two cameras and then I have prepared this chart for you. Both the cameras support of course e-mount lenses. The image sensor which is crucial part of the camera is identical with both cameras meaning they both share the same 24.2 megapixel XMOR CMOS sensor. The aspect ratio when captured at full resolution is 3 is to 2 which is a bit weird meaning there will be big black bars on either side of your monitor when viewing the images. There is a new 1 is to 1 aspect ratio on the new A6400 which is really helpful for instant Instagram share. You know, you don't have to miss the frame while cropping square. The A6500 simply doesn't feature this. So there is an added advantage with the A6400 as you can directly share your pictures with the Instagram without having to miss any of the frame in the image. So the native ISO for still images on the new has a stop better range at 32,000 ISO as compared to the A6500 which stops at 25,600 native ISO. Of course both can be expanded to one stop further but that's not much of a use anyways. Shooting speed on either cameras is again same at 11 frames per second. Now here's the key feature introduced on A6400, the real time face tracking which something the A6500 misses on. This feature is borrowed from the higher end sports camera, the Alpha 9 or rather A9. Uh, this can be a deal maker, not deal breaker. If you are someone who loves capturing portraits, action or even wildlife, the rest of the features about the uh, focusing system remains the same. Moving on, two new picture profiles have been added to the new Sony A6400, that's the HLG and HLG 1.3, which means hybrid log gamma, which should capture more information in the scene, especially with highlights. So when, whenever there is a highlight related information in the image, the new A6400's new profile uh, should capture much better. Other than this, pretty much everything else remains same. They do share the same other picture profiles. Now here's the advantage with the Sony A6500 when it comes to the video recording format. Because the A6500 supports the native MP4 or rather MPEG-4 which means it is much easier to transfer and edit in all the softwares without added fuss to the GPU. But A6400 misses on that. 
when it comes to the video size or rather the image size of the video in NTSC the A6500 gives more options as you can see in the red color which something the new A6400 misses upon the focusing points on the new A6400 is at 425 for both face detection as well as contrast detection autofocus but the A6500 has less contrast detection autofocus as you can see with only 169 points for contrast detection autofocus also the exposure value can go one stop negative on the new a6400 the a6400 also introduces new focus related settings such as the object tracking live autofocus area lock and such the rest of the things like the zebra peaking function and others remain same and available on both the cameras the major advantage on the older a6500 is that it gets in body image stabilization ibis which the a6400 misses on meaning if you want stable footage while you hold the camera you need to buy lenses with stabilizer in it but if you have a6500 the body itself helps stabilize the footage with its 5 axis stabilization for smooth video so that's a key advantage over the a6400 about the connectivity both the cameras support similar features such as the 3.5 millimeter mic input there is no headphone jack on either of these cameras there is nfc bluetooth wi-fi and of course the hdmi connector or rather micro hdmi so guys the final thing that separates these two is the battery life although both cameras use the same npfw50 battery the a6400 is touted to give more shots per charge and more minutes of recording than the a6500 if you look at the price the new a6400 is easily the better choice of the two without any brainer but if you want a ibis or in body stabilization you need to pay hundred dollars more so what do you guys actually think of these two cameras let me know in the comment section down below which one are you going to pick if this video helped you make your purchase decision don't forget to give a like share this video and subscribe for more videos like this all right guys see you all in another one till then take care everyone bye bye